to new satellite images obtained by CNN, three of the world's biggest nuclear powers have recently constructed new facilities and dug new tunnels at their test sites. Senior international correspondent Ivan Watson has more on what this might mean. The world's three most powerful militaries, the U.S., Russia, and China, have all been expanding their nuclear testing sites in recent years. The evidence revealed in these commercial satellite images obtained exclusively by CNN. These are the Russian, Chinese, and American nuclear testing sites. Novaya Zemlya, a Russian archipelago in the Arctic Ocean. Lopnur, a dried up salt lake in China's Xinjiang region. And the Nevada National Security Site in a desert northwest of Las Vegas. Images from each location show new tunnels, roads, and storage facilities constructed within the last five years. Nuclear non-proliferation expert Jeffrey Lewis first collected and analyzed these images. One big factor for both the United States, but also Russia and China, is a desire to make sure the nuclear weapons that they designed and tested in the 1980s and 1990s uh, still work. All three countries, Russia, China, and uh, the United States, have invested a great deal of time, effort, and money in not only modernizing their nuclear arsenals, uh, but also in preparing the types of activities that would be required for a test. While there's no evidence of an imminent test, Russia's Novaya Zemlya site did see a burst of new construction over the last two years. On the one-year anniversary of his full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin declared Russia's readiness to conduct nuclear tests. Some figures in Washington, we know this for a fact, are already thinking about the possibility of a natural test on their nuclear weapons. If the U.S. conducts tests, we will do so too. Welcome to U1A. Located this time lapse reveals five years of above ground expansion of the U1A complex, an underground facility at the testing site in Nevada. A spokesperson from the U.S. National Nuclear Security Administration confirmed to CNN that it is, quote, recapitalizing infrastructure and scientific capabilities at the U1A complex, adding, the United States has not conducted a nuclear explosive test since 1992 and has no plans to do so. Since the end of above ground testing, governments have used deep tunnels for their nuclear tests. Satellite images reveal a new fifth tunnel carved out at China's Lop Nur testing site, along with a growing pile of excavated debris. Washington accuses China of dramatically expanding its nuclear arsenal. We project out to 2035 when we expect that they'll want to have about 1,500 nuclear weapons. In a statement to CNN, China's foreign ministry also denied plans to test, saying, quote, this kind of report only speaks on hearsay evidence and hypes up China's nuclear threat for no reason. Fire. The specter of a new nuclear test would shatter restraint exhibited by the U.S., China, and Russia ever since the 1990s. If you are a, a farmer in Ohio or a shopkeeper in Shanghai, the threat of nuclear testing isn't the tests themselves. It's the fact that you are essentially agreeing to pay vast sums of money in an arms race that no one can win, uh, but we can all lose. Ivan Watson, CNN, Hong Kong. We have some exclusive new satellite images obtained by CNN that we want to share with you. They show the world's three most powerful militaries, the United States, Russia, and China, have all been expanding their nuclear testing sites in recent years. This buildup comes amid heightened tensions between the three powers and as Russia is nearly 600 days into its invasion of Ukraine, where the Kremlin has repeatedly threatened to use nukes. I'm joined now by retired Major General James Spider Marks. He's a CNN military analyst. General, thanks so much for sharing part of your afternoon with us. Does this news indicate to you that we may be on the precipice of a nuclear test? Well, we could. Look, we haven't seen nuclear tests from any of these nations since the early to mid-90s. But over the course of those intervening 30 years is we've determined, when you look at modern military capabilities, there has been a modernization across the board in terms of all those elements of power within the services. Not so with the nuclear force, and that's been one of the deficiencies. So it's 
probably not surprising. The challenge is, is we're seeing this potential improvement or modernization in the nuclear force during a period of war between one of those advanced nuclear powers, Russia and Ukraine. That's the context that has us all worried. Uh, General, what would you say might be the diplomatic fallout if one or all of these countries conduct a nuclear test? Well, first of all, there, I, I would suggest there would have to be notifications a priori, unlike the North Koreans, which have done six tests mm. over the course of maybe 10 to 12 years. They just do them, and you have to kind of figure it out, which we do. We have the technology. We have the intelligence capability to do that. So there should be some a priori notifications, and it should be labeled as such. Look, we're doing nuclear modernization. We're doing these tests. We have no... You know, we have no intent to use this capacity, yet at the same time, we need to talk about the limitations. Look, we've always, we've had the start talks, we've had the salt talks, we've reduced the nuclear threshold and the inventory. We need to continue to progress in that area. But the modernization of the nuke force is essential. When you look around, unless you get rid of them all, you've got to be able to modernize unless you're going to have yourself a legitimate disadvantage. That's not going to happen. So I, I want to zoom in now on the conflict in Ukraine specifically. There are some new attacks by Ukraine against the headquarters of the Russian Black Sea Naval Fleet. We have some video of it right here on the wall. Uh, why is that a significant target, General? Well, it has to be done. And what we've seen um, in terms of the Ukrainian use of force is they've been incredibly imaginative. Normally, you look at attack, you know, a tank the best uh, tank uh, vehicle to go against a tank is another tank. The, the, the way to go after a ship is another ship. What we've seen is this very creative use of drone, you know, unattended sensors and unattended capabilities that can go after these. It has to be done to go after the Black Sea Fleet because that has a long range kinetic capability that can bottle up the Black Sea and can, can, can contribute to the isol isolation of Ukraine. Ukraine is wise to go after the Black Sea Fleet, and they're not doing that. Um, they're not doing that to prevent their abilities to go after the Russian forces on the ground. This is complementary to all of that. These are deep fires that need to be done to reduce the Russian capabilities. Uh, notably, General, our reporting indicates that Ukrainian forces are also likely behind some recent military activity, attacks against Russian-linked forces in Sudan, so I'm wondering, from your perspective, how what's happening in Africa impacts what's happening in Eastern Europe? Well, this is this is the competition. Look, Africa is not necessarily a new battleground. What Africa enjoys is um, a rare earth minerals, these critical minerals that are the lithium, the cobalt that are necessary for the chip manufacturing and the modernization of all of our capabilities, whether it's economic, whether it's financial, whether it's in different industries to include military modernization. So this is a battleground where the Russians, autocratic nations like China, like North Korea, like Russia, are making a mad dash to ensure that they have unfiltered access to these capabilities. The United States needs to make sure they're not in a catch up mode and are competing appropriately. So what this leads to, Russian understands that they have a military that has failed and has fallen apart. They want to make sure that they have access to these capabilities, and then they need to be able to make sure they can get this stuff processed, which means you do it in places like China. That's what we see stay, taking place right now. General James Spider-Marks, appreciate the perspective. Thanks so much.